Here is a very good one that I want to point out to you right now, if, you're, if I'm putting this on your radar. Ferdinand Lundberg. Now, he has a whole body of work that's going to follow from this 1937 work called The 60 Families. Now we're starting to name names here. He calls it a plutocratic circle. Again, this is 1937, Great Depression, 60 families, a plutocratic circles of 60 interlinked families and 44 lesser families. He's going to say essentially they control politics, they control the media, they control academia. Again, these ideas are problematizing central modes of thinking that uh, policies are the product of a democratic process. Uh, designed for the enhancement of the state interest or the state as a whole, that history is kind of occurring accidentally. Um, and that's why this kind of information tends to be shunned at the university, even though um, this is a great scholarly work, as were the previous two, and right. all that was mentioned, 56 work, the power elite. And that's kind of where we get the term elite from in political discourse. We don't use that term anymore. It was a common term in the first half of the century, the 20th century, when people really looked to elite power to explain outcomes in America, the discipline was shifted, political science discipline was shifted, um, I will argue hijacked, so that uh, we have exclusively only looked at um, the democratic process in terms of explaining outcomes. But C. Wright Mills was insistent that if you want to understand what's going on in the world, you look at what he called the elite class. and you know, just so he is saying it in no uncertain terms, it's this interwoven interest of the leaders of the military, corporate, political, and economic dimensions of society. Ordinary citizens are relatively powerlessly subjected to the manipulation by those entities. So again, in conjunction with all these other works we discussed, we realize that there is an identifiable- How it uh, operates, how it verifies. functions, and the connection to deep state operations. Because I think people can jabber on about the deep state however they want to. If you're not able to make that connection to oligarch, its mode of operation, and its genealogy, you're really not going to have much idea about what you're talking about and the unfolding of and events here in the world. here Mills gets into this idea that we're repeating it, sort of from Ferdinand Luxemburg's work and the previous work that we have. Uh, that there's an interweaving of networks and interest, military, corporate, political, that direct the affairs of society. And according to Mills, this power elite uh, occupy the dominant positions in um, all sort of institutions so that's of power. A bucket in the load States. that he just said right there. But essentially, He's making an assessment that America traditionally was based upon this idea of distrust of the federal government, distrust of corporate entities, and distrust of the military. So he's saying what we have now is uh, the dominant corporate, sort of uh, the beginning of what he sees is a nexus between the corporate, uh, the military, and the workings inside of Washington that have creeped into every crevice. Now notice that year 1950. Six, by the time we get to 1960, we're thinking of the farewell speech by uh, President Dwight D. Eisenhower, where he's going, to, he's going to talk about the military industrial complex to be aware. Well, we already have in 1956, C. Wright Mills had very much put that on the radar that uh, this, this was the center of power in an operative way in the United States. Um, he says the distinction from modern American, he wants to distance himself, of course, from this idea of conspiracy. So he's saying that it does operate in an orchestrated way. There is collusion going on. Sometimes the members may or may not know that they're part of this structure. So essentially, he's walking around that word. But um, essentially, he's saying there is a system of control that works in, um, in a government mode that is not part of the visible government. And he calls it the power elite, the true brokers of power.